All righty. Well, welcome to week seven, guys. I, uh, I hope everything is treating you well so far and that fall quarter hasn't been too rough and that midterms are going well and all that. I wanted, you to, I wanted to welcome you to our resume and cover letter workshop tonight. Uh, we're excited to you know, help you guys out professionally. I know we've had a lot of really good guest speakers lately and we had a good debate night the other night, but now it's time to get down to some business with regards to ourselves and how can we set ourselves up to be successful professionally. So thanks for joining us tonight and I hope you uh, are able to walk away with some good takeaways. All right, so before we start, I just wanna make clear, there is no one correct resume. So you will often hear different feedback from many people, okay? Like everyone's got different types and at the end of the day, you just gotta be confident with what you got, all right? What you're submitting, you gotta be able to talk about, okay? So make sure you tailor your position, tailor your resume for the position you're applying for, all right? So what is a resume? A resume is a one page document that sums up your professional qualifications. So stuff like where'd you go to school? Where have you worked at previously? What skills do you bring to the table? All right, it's a great tool to showcase your value to potential employers. If you go to the Career Center uh, through UCLA, their headline quote is that your resume is a powerful market marketing tool to land an interview. Employers typically scan a resume for about 15 to 30 seconds. So make sure to craft a resume that is clear, concise, and demonstrates how you meet their needs. You essentially are selling yourself. All right, so what are some general tips? So we, we typically wanna highlight skills, achievements, and what you learned. So don't create a duty list, like you mop the floors, or for example, I've done this before, like you went and picked up coffee or something like that. No, no one cares about that on a resume, all right? So use this space to discuss things that are relevant to that job that you're looking for. And this is a huge must right here. You gotta keep it to one page, all right? Like you just read about that career center thing, it's about a 15 to 30 second window that you have to pique their interest and get them to bite on you. So in most cases, you gotta keep it under one page. There obviously are some exceptions. Now format, that's crucial. You gotta use only one font type the entire way through. Typically want your name to be about 16 to 18 point font so it jumps off the page. And then the rest of your font size should be between about 10 to 12. And you're gonna want your margins to be about a half inch to an inch. And when you want things to stand out, make sure to use things like bold, italicizing or something like that. All caps or small caps, underlining. And we're not doing it right now because of COVID and all that, but when you are delivering things in person, you generally wanna have it on a good piece of white or ivory paper. Now with regards to selling yourself, don't undersell yourself. First off, if you're here right now, that, that means you're a UCLA student. So you clearly do a lot of things right. And you're at a very special place that a lot of people would kill to be at. Last I checked, I think our acceptance rate is like 14 or 15%. So that alone already puts you in a great spot when you're applying for jobs. So always remember that, okay? And consider too that all the experiences you've had in college so far are important. So this includes part-time jobs, student organizations such as this one, FISBA, Bruin Sports Business Association, any leadership experience, relevant class projects, and anything else that you think is pertinent to the role that you're applying for. And then lastly, make it your own. Um, so like we already told you, there's no exact formula for a perfect resume and make sure to just tailor it to yourself, including sections that highlight your personal individual experiences and keep the most relevant and recent information first. All right. Now we're going to see my resume a little bit later on, and I include some high school stuff in there for personal reasons, but that is something I would generally not recommend. Okay. Now just looking at the general structure real quick. In the first section, you're gonna want your education, especially if you're a UCLA Bruin. Um, and then following that, you're gonna to wanna to put your work experience with your most recent ones first, and then your campus involvements, and then any additional information you may wish to add. So with regards to some more like basic formatting tips, like we said, there's no right way to do it. However, you wanna definitely start with your contact info at the top. So if someone wants to reach out to you to say schedule an interview or something like that, they know exactly how to do it because it's right there. So you're gonna want your name, number and location. Now in the past, people have put full addresses and stuff, you know, for mail and all that, but honestly, that's not really a thing anymore. So you can just put your location, like your town or city or something like that. And obviously your appropriate email as well. So for us, I would suggest your UCLA emails, but at the end of the day, put the one that you check the most. Okay. When you're putting your education, 
you're going to want to include your school, obviously, um, your expected graduation date, field of study, and any study abroad if you've done it. So personally, I'm a student athlete. I play football here, and I would not be able to do that. Uh, but if you, are, if you are able to, that's something really cool, and you should be proud of it. Um, also, you don't need to include relevant coursework unless it's a highly specified position. And with regards to GPA, if you got a strong one, include it. But if it's below 3.0, first, I would recommend fixing that and trying to study as hard as you can. And secondly, don't include it until it's above 3.0. That's generally the minimum threshold that employers give uh, when they're giving serious uh, consideration to candidates. Okay. Now, with regards to experience, all right, you're going to want to list your most recent ones first. Format and style should be universal and consistent. As you can see here, uh, this person's got the same font, the same spacing, all that, same type of time frame. You don't want to write on the top there for Viacom. You don't want to put January as a full word, and then in your following one, put September as a uh, shortened word or something like that. If you want to write the full month, by all means, go for it, but then make sure you do it on the rest of the page, okay? Now, when doing formatting and style, obviously you want it universally and consistent, including where you were, what you did, and for how long, okay? And one thing some people overlook, but honestly it looks really good, is including your volunteer experience, any unpaid internships or part-time employment. Anything you've done that is tangible work that you had to put effort towards, that's something you could talk about. So I would definitely include it. Now with regards to building bullet points, all right, let's look at this first little graphic right here, and then we'll look at an example right after. So starting with uh, what you're putting like for your work or something like that, you gotta say, what did you do, all right? So ask yourself, what were your responsibilities, projects, anything like that? What were your duties? Now, how'd you do it? So what tools or resources or technology or things did you have to learn in order to accomplish these things? And then after that, let's elaborate with details, okay? So how often were you doing this work? What was the purpose of it? Who were you working with? How many people were you working with? The more hard facts and data you can include, the better. And then finally, include the results. So what did you accomplish or improve? Did you meet or exceed a goal? Did you create something new? Uh, again, when you can include like hard facts, tangible data, that really jumps off the page and makes you look even better. I don't know about you guys, but as a sports person, numbers really speak to me, all right? Someone can say they're good all day, but if they're shooting 60% from the free throw line, that's not cutting it. But if you tell me you're shooting 89% or something like that, 90% looking like Steph Curry, that's gonna jump off the page and we're gonna want you. So if you got numbers you're proud of, include it. So let's look at an example if you were to tutor students or something, all right? So the what is how you tutored students, yeah? How? You tutored students using a variety of methods to adjust to different learning styles, all right? That already sounds pretty good. Elaborating further, you can say you tutored students to help them retain information and improve both grades and overall performance in math and English. Now, combining it all, the what, the why, and the result, you tutored students to help them improve grades and overall and overall performance, you saw market improvement over a three month period in 100% of students. That right there, if I'm looking to hire somebody, I like that. I want that, I wanna to talk to this person and get to know him or her, okay? Now you can also, you can add adjectives, all right? So you tutored at-risk youth in math and English. You assess learning styles of each student and creatively adjusted tutoring, tutoring style based on results. You affected information retention and overall grade improvement in 100% of students tutored over a three month period. You, you were acknowledged by your director for strong commitment to student success, all right? So all those types of things, you know, using good language vocabulary, maybe go on thesaurus.com. Anything that can help get you to jump off the paper is really good. All right, so here's an example of a job opening. All right, so if it's a Wasserman summer internship, doing a public relations for football, all right? So real quick, we're gonna read through some of the duties and then the school skills and qualifications and then look at the ones you should emphasize, okay? So some of the things you'd have to do, I'm not gonna read through the whole thing, but just the first few and you'll get the gist of it. You would be supporting the vice president, public relations and communications and football, all right? Wasserman is a sports agency, by the way, for any of you who don't know. And he's actually a UCLA alum and our football center is actually named after him because he was our biggest donor. So he's definitely, he's a big name around Westwood and as UCLA students, it's always worth uh, going for a position there because the UCLA connections certainly run deep. Um, so moving back to the duties, 
You would edit, update, and expand media lists. You would assist with content ideas for Wasserman's football clients. You'd explore potential media opportunities for football clients, whether it's market research, pitching, whatever, selling, you know, contribute to researching, editing, and writing press releases, statements, and other internal and external communications. So bios, one sheeters, all that. Now moving on to the skills and qualifications. You got to have a degree currently in progress, which all of you guys have, thankfully. They say preferably majoring in public relations or communications, but let me tell you, I'm a political science guy. I don't care that it says that right there. I think it's pretty similar to that. And even if you're a mechanical engineer or pre-med or whatever, I would say go for it. You don't know until you try. And then also anyone can do this no matter what major they're in. If you have strong writing and editing capabilities, good Microsoft Excel and Power Microsoft Excel and PowerPoint skills, that's good. And I think by virtue of us all being uh, millennials or Gen Z or whatever we're called these days, uh, the fact that you have knowledge of the media landscape, whether it's print, online, broadcast, or whatever, these are things you're already bringing to the table. So some skills you might want to emphasize when looking at this job would be you have an ability to conduct in-depth in depth industry research. All right, you probably had to do that for classes anyways, to be honest. Number two, you would write concise and succinct documents and briefs. Number three, you would contribute to the strategy, planning, and execution of a group project. And number four, we, I, I know for a fact, all of us probably have this. You have innate social media savviness and expertise on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn. I would, if I were you, YouTube, LinkedIn, if those are ones you're less comfortable with, go try them, you know, go get more comfortable with them. You get to bring more to the table. So it makes you a stronger candidate. And then finally, you have a strong ability to manage competition tasks in a timely and efficient manner. As UCLA students, you can really play this up that, listen, the quarter system, it's a lot quicker, fast paced, and uh, it pushes you a lot harder than say the semester system. And that alone can make you a stronger candidate as well. So by all means, pick whatever your strengths are and really play them up. All right, so another opening, all right, the LA Sparks uh, sales, um, sales Academy. Some of the duties there, you'd be learning uh, how to create and develop new business by regularly pitching new prospects through outbound calling and events, uh, following up on leads for ticket sales, upcoming games, ticket targeted programs and seasonal events. You know, how can we get more butts in the seats? It's obviously uh, not something we're really doing right now because it's not safe during COVID, but when the time comes back again, this is stuff that's very important. Uh, as you heard from Greg Bonacarsi a few weeks ago, not all of these uh, big pro sports organizations are as uh, flush with cash as we may think they are from the outside. They're running on pretty tight margins. So this could be a very important job at a place like the LA Sparks or any professional team. You'd also be attending some community events representing the Sparks to drive brand awareness and the interest of fans. So you'd be representing them as a company. You'd be the face of them while there um, with other uh, colleagues, of course, but nonetheless, you're still representing them and you got to hold yourself to a high standard. And so what would some knowledge, skills, and abilities be that would be good for a job like that? They want people who are strong in time management and customer service skills. Do you have high energy? Are you, do you have an ability to remain focused on sales goals? Are you able to maintain accurate records of all prospecting activities and closed sales? I would argue if you're an organized guy like me, this isn't stuff that's all that hard. Uh, and you'd probably do it already if you're a, a student here anyways. So that's stuff you could definitely bring to the table. Some skills you'd want to emphasize here would be a willingness and ability to learn. All right, so draw from any learning in your classroom or self-taught technical skills. Uh, you have an ability to pursue and maintain new relationships. This is something where you could refer to us here at BISBA and talk about the networking opportunities, talk about some of the people you've gotten to meet, interact with, hear from, all right? This is a special place. It's definitely worth pay playing up. And finally, you want to illustrate an ability to work with diverse groups through on-campus organization involvement, volunteer experience, et cetera. Again, I think BISBA offers that right there. You got a mix of student athletes, regular students, uh, and people from all various different backgrounds who are all working towards the same goal, uh, which is to become successful in the sports industry, hopefully. But these are all ways that you can help find some skills and emphasize them, okay? Another opening. Uh, let's look at like Baller TV sports operations support intern. Okay. This one just uh, out of respect for everyone's time. We'll just read the summary. You can read some of the responsibilities and qualifications real quick, but the summary will be the ideal candidate as a strong interest in business ops and sports broadcasting. 
Uh, you're a motivated individual who's organized, detail-oriented, and able to learn quickly. Again, as UCLA students, you have these already, if you ask me, and a place like this would help, help for you to flourish. Um, so some skills you'd wanna emphasize when looking at them would be that you're able to prioritize competing tasks in order to meet the needs of a department. That's something that'd be very valuable to them. Uh, retail, restaurant, hospitality experience can illustrate an ability to manage equipment or inventory. So for example, one of our eboard directors, Connor Wayne, he's a student manager for our football team and God bless those guys. They help us with a ton of stuff and our team wouldn't be the same without them. So someone like him with a background like that and Hillary, Hillary Fu as well, she's a vice president for us. She's a manager for the women's tennis team. These people without them, our teams can't operate in the way that they do. And so there are some people who you should definitely reach out to if you're ever interested in those types of positions, because it definitely makes you a stronger candidate for these types of things. And random side note, but actually a guy from our football team named Joel Rafter, who used to be a student manager, he's now working for Draymond Green. Uh, so it goes to show that these types of jobs, anyone can get into them and they can take you anywhere. You never know until you try. So definitely reach out to some of these people if you're interested. And we'll give you our email and all that at the end, or feel free to DM us because those are definitely people worth talking to if you ask me. Um, so finally, show some passion for sports, uh, but at the same time, you don't want to sound like too eager or unprofessional. So there, there are nuanced ways to go about it, but I think you guys are smart enough. you got good heads on your shoulders and you can figure it out. Uh, and then here we got another job opening at the Tennis Channel content intern. Shout out to all our uh, tennis people who are part of BizBa. I know we have quite a few of them. Uh, so some of the requirements, I'm not going to read through it all again, just out of respect for time, but you must be currently attending an accredited institution registered with uh, college credits there during the time that that internship is performed. You got to be in good academic standing as defined by the academic institution, which at UCLA, I think that's probably a 3.0. I know that's kind of what it is for athletics, and that's just kind of the general standard to be considered in good standing uh, as a student. Obviously, you got to be minimum of 18, which I think pretty much all of you are. Now this one, you actually wouldn't have to put too much time per week, just 10 to 20 hours or two full days of work. Uh, so that gives you a good amount of time to still get things done in class and have a good work-life balance. Um, accessible transportation and weekend availability. Obviously this is something that during COVID they may not be as strict about uh, because a lot of things are just remote these days. And in general, just an interest in sports entertainment or tennis, which I think by virtue of you being a part of an association like this, you already have that on your resume right there. So definitely talk about that. So some technical skills you would want to highlight if you're going for a position like this would be Photoshop and Microsoft Suite. Because again, this is a content intern. This isn't just like a general support intern or something like that. So a general knowledge of content management systems would be good. So think of things like Hootsuite, Pinoli, Planoli, et cetera. As you can tell, I'm not too uh, knowledgeable in the content world, but that's definitely, if, if this is something that's for you, this would be a cool job. Uh, so a big emphasis on data entry and information logging as well would be helpful for when pursuing a position like this. All right, so just real briefly from an overhead bird's eye view, we're gonna revisit some of these resumes in a little bit. Uh, one of them is Nicholas Kahn, who's our director of business administration. Another is myself, which by the way, I didn't introduce myself at the start, but I'm Colin Flintoft and I'm one of our vice presidents here. I'm a junior studying political science, playing football here. Um, so we'll revisit these in a little bit. And then Lucy right there, that's just a random one off of Google images. Uh, but it goes to show there are like many different ways to slice an apple or something. Like there are many different ways to go about it. Okay, so by all means, these can all be successful, you know? All right, so looking kind of at cover letters now. So what's a cover letter and why is it important? So a cover letter is a letter of introduction that highlights your best qualities, okay? It's your opportunity to stand out amongst the crowd. What differentiates you from the rest of these people we're looking at? All right, we got a hundred or so applications in here. Why should we take you? Why are you special, okay? Keep in mind too, similar to a resume, there's no firm, correct way to do it, okay? It's more meant as a tool to further elaborate and explain your experiences uh, and give the reader a perspective that your resume cannot, okay? A resume can only convey so much. It, it doesn't necessarily share who you are as a person, the essence of who you are. And we'll touch upon that a little later in my cover letter and some of the other co cover letters we're gonna explore. So a, 
one final thing is that a cover letter can allow people to share unique stories or qualities about his or herself, okay? It can also be used to explain circumstances in a positive light. So say you don't have a GPA you're proud about or something like that. You can explain maybe it was a, a tough period during your life, but here's how you overcame it or something like that. There are always ways to spin things into a positive and how they helped further you in the right direction. All right, so generally we, we like to look at a, a three paragraph cover letter. It's just, it's got a nice uh, flow and rhythm to it, you know, a beginning, middle, end type of thing. So looking at our first paragraph, that's one where we kind of want to talk about purpose a little bit. So you want to state why you're writing and the type of position or field you're interested in, all right? Indicate to them how you learned of it. If there isn't a specific position available, tell them how you became interested in it. How'd you get turned on to it? So an example here would be, dear internship coordinator, I would like to be considered for the Walt Disney Accounting Internship Program posted on UCLA's Handshake website. I'm currently a junior and majoring in business economics with a minor in accounting at the University of California, Los Angeles. My academic integrity and work experience have given me the essential skills to excel as a member of your team. And right there, I really like that last part, guys. That's conveying a lot of confidence, okay? These people feed off of confidence and the more you got, the more attractive you seem as a uh, potential employee. All right, so looking at the second paragraph, you wanna talk a bit there about your background and qualifications, okay? The goal is to match your skills to the skills in the job description, all right? So maybe mentioning specialized training, elaborating specifically on that and how those skills can align with the skills that the job requires, okay? Now this, you can also be flexible. Like we said, there's no firm format. So if you want to here, you could break it up into two paragraphs if you just got a lot to talk about and a lot to share. Um, so the example we'll look at here is this internship program provides a great opportunity for me to apply my communication, organizational, creative and quantitative skills in a collaborative and interactive environment. For the past two years, I've worked as a student assistant for the UCLA Anderson School of Management. This position requires organization, effective communication, and technical skills, as I'm responsible for scheduling appointments and interfacing with prominent alumni and professionals. Having such an important role, I've truly learned how to effectively manage my time to balance my work, school, and leadership commitments. This position has provided me with an opportunity to develop strong communication and computer skills from using programs like Excel and PowerPoint in addition to learning how to prioritize tasks to ensure all projects are completed in a timely manner. So yeah, I know that was a lot of words right there, but that's a pretty strong paragraph. All right, and then looking kind of at the third paragraph, this is where you kind of want to, you want to find out what's next, you know, request for action. Um, and later on, uh, looking towards next quarter, we're going to have some, uh, some interview workshops and some networking workshops where we'll touch a lot about this, like request for action, you know, follow up, stuff like that. But in your writing, this is good right here, where you want to close your letter by briefly restating how your qualifications match the position and then conclude with a statement expressing your appreciation for their consideration. And huge is just looking forward to the next time you get to connect, okay? Figuring out what to do next. So I believe that I will provide an immediate benefit to the accounting team at Disney because I'm a dedicated and determined individual. Again, great confidence right there, okay? And then ending it off on a positive note with, Thank you for your time and consideration. I look forward to scheduling an interview where I can talk more about my interests and qualifications. Getting an interview, guys, and getting your foot in the door is huge, okay? So the chance you get to go and prove yourself through ending with something like a request for action like this, it, it really can open up a world of opportunities. So it's definitely very important to talk about what's next. All right, so I'm gonna hand it off to Christina, our president right here, with uh, an example of a great cover letter by her. Okay. Um, so have you guys all just like, you know, do a little reaction or a thumbs up if you've made a cover letter before, just to like gauge the room or like shake your head. No, if you have not. <laughs> okay. There's kind of a good little, uh, good mix. Um, well, I hope like that so far was super helpful. Colin, you did an amazing job so far. Um, and it's interesting. So this cover letter specifically, I wrote, yeah, 20, well, I wrote it in 2018. It was for a, a Nike internship in 2019 of summer, um, which I did end up getting. Um, and so I knew at this point, I had had one internship, um, which was, I don't have one, I guess, but um, it was at Under Armour. And so I knew I had to kind of speak a little bit more on my 
cover letter than just like my experiences at the time I did have that and I had my own like uh, platform I just created so I really kind of went in here I probably I usually did not write this much for a cover letter um but specifically for this Nike one I really wanted it so I kind of like told my own story um so I started out um talking about like a campaign they had in 2012 because I was applying for a marketing position so I did my research as well and I wanted to show that in a cover letter so that I'd be more appealing applicant to be um considered for an interview um so I did some research and I also incorporated that into the components that Colin previously stated um so I kind of like on the right hand side you see um, paragraph one, I kind of had a hook. I wrote it a little bit more in a story format. Um, and then I spoke, like I said, part two, I spoke a little bit more on like industry knowledge um, and what captivated me to the company. Um, similar to when you want to say like, how did you hear about this position? I spoke about how Nike campaigns have inspired me since 2012. Um, and this is why as an athlete. Um, and then in paragraph two, I have a little bit more emphasis on that industry and on that industry knowledge as well. Um, I spoke about at the time I did actually work in a Nike store um, previously. So although it wasn't like a formal internship, I still spoke about how that could actually like parlay into um, me being a better candidate for this internship program. Um, and so never like shy off also for cover letters or resumes don't like shy or be like too humble, make sure you really um, try to position yourself in the best way. So I spoke about that experience as well. Um, and then also I was remaining anecdotal. Um, so I made the this cover letter very, very personal um, as well um, and hopefully memorable. And then at the end, I spoke about my passion for storytelling as well um, within the sports world and kind of also expanded upon the things that were on my resume. So the media company I um, started at UCLA, Top 5 Media, uh, what our mission was, spoke more about the passion behind all of that. Um, and just some things that I couldn't include or didn't have space to include on my resume um, to really expand on what those experiences meant to me and how they made me a better person and more qualified person for this role. Um, and then I also, um, at the end, of course, have the thank you. Um, and I kind of went in also saying, I hope to receive an official interview for this position and have an opportunity to rejoin the team. So I kind of spoke, um, in a way that was a little bit more confident, like hoping we can rejoin Nike since I had worked in the store previously. Um, and once again, I just wanted to elude that sense of confidence throughout. So that was my cover letter, um, as well. And then here is a second cover letter um, from one of my friends, Jasmine, who was in this business club as well previously. Um, and so she specifically um, was talking about her own experience. So similarly, paragraph one this is also a very long cover letter. So these don't have to necessarily be this long, but if it is something that you really want to go after, it is always good to express and show that um, because sometimes that gets like respected even more. So similarly, Jasmine wrote a, a longer cover letter as well. Um, and it was a company or organization called the Unmentionables, which I believe was a nonprofit actually. Um, and she was looking to be in the content marketing realm. So paragraph one, similarly, background knowledge talks about her school being at UCLA, um, her major as well, an overview of, of the content of the cover letter. Um, so then she goes into paragraph two. She once again also includes a personal anecdote. I think that's really important for a cover letter is not only to hit those components of, you know, where you go to school, what you've done, but you have to find a way to make it personal because people not only want to hire qualified candidates, they want to hire people they want to work with as well. Um, so really try to express that um, in some way through a personal like anecdote um, that explains maybe your passion, your interest, um, and you can really speak to that because um, on your resume, sometimes you can't just talk about, you know, what you want to do and on your cover letter, you can. Um, so she also highlights specific skills um, that she has acquired as well. Um, and then she also then leads all of that into why her experience then leads her 
um, to wanting to join this internship specifically. Um, so it's kind of, once again, told in a storytelling lens um, and shows how her knowledge of the different culture and a different experience also aligns with the company. So it's always important to figure out, similar to how Colin was speaking about aligning your resume with the job description, even if it's like the adjectives of, on the job description, like trying to use some of those um, into your resume, because sometimes they'll even just search really quick um, and search specific words. And so similarly, it's aligning your own personal values with the values of the company. Something I always do before an interview, um, before I'm writing a cover letter, is I also look at the values of the company. That's something you can just Google. What are the values of Nike? What are the, um, what's the mission statement of Nike? You got to make sure you know all of those things um, and to make yourself qualified and know how to position yourself as well. Um, so that's really important to note as well. And lastly, in her last paragraph, she reiterates her personal commitment to telling stories and her passion, where that came from. Um, and then of course, ends with a thank you um, and looking forward to future correspondence. Um, so that's another example as well. Yes, thank you, Christina. And now we'll move on to, we'll let Nick speak a little bit about his resume right here. Uh, so Nick, you have the floor. Awesome. Thank you, Colin. So as you guys can see here, um, this is my resume. Um, one thing that I really like to focus on in my resume is not so much the quantity experience, but the amount of depth I go into each experience. Um, as you can see, I start with education. Um, I'm busy con and put my GPA, um, some coursework. Obviously, that's optional if you want to put that or not. Um, but then uh, I go into my experiences, the um, who I have there are the internships I had this last summer um, and uh, the summer before that. Um, both of them are actually startups and I'm actually still working at IPG, which is a sports company. Uh, as you can see, one of the big things, um, I start, my first line of it is explaining what the company does. And then the next three lines, um, I go into the, the skills that I've done. Everything that you do should really be like, I led this or I researched this or I did a, did a task or if you're still doing it, you go through and talk about what you're currently doing, but everything should be a verb. You really shouldn't, you should never have I or any of those things in there. It's really about the verb and the action that you did. Um, a lot of times in an interview, they'll go and say, walk me through your resume and, and they'll point to a, a, an experience. They'll say, hey, can you expand more on your time as president of Tamid? And then I can go in and talk about my experiences. While, but I do have a lot of depth here in case I interview or for something and they ask for your resume beforehand, they wanna read through it. Um, you can get a good grasp of what a person's skills are if you have more depth on your um, each experiences. So I go through my two experiences, then my three, um, these are like the big clubs that I'm a part of. And then the last line, which you would think isn't important, it's just an interest thing, but I've actually had more questions about something like play-by-play um, -play announcing. Like, for example, I call the UCLA baseball game. Um, that, putting that there, something that's weird, something that people are like, oh, that interests you, that can change the whole tide of an interview where instead of talking about boring, like, what's one thing you're afraid of? Or um, tell me a time you failed, those things that are very generic, it can turn into a 45-minute conversation about how you love um, talking about the Minnesota Vikings Saints um, ending with the Minneapolis miracle in 2016 or talking about a soccer game, those things that interest where people can bring that up can change the whole tide of an interview and can change if you get a position or not. So it's really, really important that you put those interests in. Um, and you can also put skills. I don't put them there because I don't have that many skills. Um, no, but I, I just prefer the interests over the skills. So yeah, that's, this is one way to format it. Um, I, I, it looks clean, it, or at least I think it does. Um, and it's pretty easy to read. I probably wish I could put bigger font, but I have a lot of information, but that's basically my resume. Yeah, thank you, Nick. That's definitely pretty clean. So uh, now just in looking at mine, um, just due to time, I'm not gonna go too in depth on it so we can get more questions from you guys in a second, but. You can just see here, just visually speaking, it's a slightly different style. Um, this is just one that I personally prefer, but Nick's, I would argue, is probably the more traditional one, uh, the really good one. <laughs> um, I just personally like this more on my eyes. And at the end of the day, like we said earlier in the presentation, 
you got to be very confident about what you submit. And so this is what I feel best submitting. Um, and I definitely like to convey confidence in interviews. Um, one other thing I'll just point out real quick before we look at Jada's on the next slide is that I include my LinkedIn uh, profile at the top if they ever want to go check it out there. Because as you guys will come to see, for those of you who know LinkedIn well or those who don't, LinkedIn is essentially like a Facebook, but for professional work stuff. So I actually post on LinkedIn a lot. Um, and some of our elder members do as well. And it's a great way to just network in a professional way. Uh, it's social networking professionally. Uh, so that's something that is definitely growing more and more these days. Uh, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed that visual. And now we will uh, check out Jada's. Yeah, thank you, Colin. And Nick and Colin, they both displayed really great resumes and the mines has some little, some differences and some similarities as well. Um, but because I'm also now transitioning into the student life, there's also some things that I wanted to make sure that I kept in there as well um, to showcase things that are important to me at this current stage since I have been in UCLA quite a while. And just make sure, just wanted to highlight the things, especially as Colin said earlier, highlight the things that I'm really interested in, um, the ones that will definitely stand out when it comes to um, future job careers and things that are important to me. Um, so I ended up uh, adding or taking out a lot of things a little bit, but as you can see, it's kind of a, a little bit more of a simpler or I guess kind of simpler layout. I put um, the athletics and education um, points together just to also help with space but just to make sure especially if you're an athlete make sure you um, add what your um, what team you're on and even things that you um, got as far as awards that's something that's very important to acknowledge whether it's athletic or academics those are pretty huge because they can see that you're a well-rounded student uh, student and athlete so those are important things to consider just as an overall um, person and then as Colin and Nick mentioned, uh, mentioned work experience, that's also very key. You can, um, I kept a former one because especially being in the tennis world, that could definitely help. But I also have some current ones um, here like voice and sport, that's something I'm currently in, but also a former like experience with ESPN. That's also huge if I wanted to get into media. Um, but also making sure that you do add your leadership experience. Um, I did a lot of stuff in my undergrad, but I also wanted to take parts of that out just to do things, like I said, that I'm currently in as a grad student, just to help minimize space. Because again, as Colin said er earlier, you don't want, you don't typically want a uh, resume over a page because readers and employees, they're not going to have all the time in the world to read everything. So keeping it within a page is definitely going to be very key, but also be very uh, precise with the information that you are adding. Um, so that way it catches the reader's eye. And then as well at the bottom, I also wanted to add my skills and interests as well. I think that's something that definitely very uh, sticks out um, to employers. Um, you can add both, you could add one or the other, but especially if you're going into anything in media, it would obviously be good to add anything within the media world. Um, or if you're in data, whatever, anything that you're suited in, make sure you kind of add those skills as well um, that relates to it. Um, but as Nick said, interests are important as well. So I wanted to make sure I added those at the bottom. The font is a little bit small. I'm sorry about that if you can't read it too much, but again, um, just trying to get in as much concise information as you can just within that one page. Um, and that's pretty much it. Yes, thank you, Jada, I appreciate it. And so guys, I was gonna read you a cover letter of mine, um, but out of respect for time, I'll just sum it up real quick. Uh, this is a cover letter that I personally just wrote recently a few weeks ago for a job app that I just wanted to share because I think it's like pretty unique. Uh, so I wrote about like theoretically if I were to win a prestigious award uh, that I'd want it to be for being the most engaged listener in that in this letter, I write about how in all the communities I'm a part of, whether it's UCLA football, here at BISBA or just the UCLA student body as a whole with all of, all of the students, I know that we can all work hard. So I know that we can all work hard. So what separates me from a lot of other people? I think that's being an engaged listener. So being things like present, relaxed and confident, knowing that uh, the words will always come in conversation and stuff like that is something I definitely pride myself on. And I mentioned that, but it's also something that towards the end of it, I mentioned that I think it's a unique quality, but that I don't want it to remain that way. And then I want to teach and share it with other people so that we can all foster not only better relationships with one another, but uh, just with our communities as a whole. So we can just succeed as professionals and 
also in our personal lives. So I just want to share that real quick that you can take some non-traditional moves uh, because at the end of the day, you want to use things that can just get you in to get an interview. Um, so Christina and Jasmine's are great. Clearly Christina's was very good as well. She got to work at Nike, which was really cool. So a lot of different things work guys. I just wanted to share this so you can know that. All right. And then real quick, wanted to talk a little bit about UCLA's really good resources. So the Career Center is very useful for finding standard formats for resumes and cover letters that you can look at a lot more in, uh, extensively and stuff like that. They have different resumes tailored for each types of individuals. They have student athlete formats, uh, business formats, engineer formats, or like the roles you're looking for, like whether it's a marketing job or, or as an engineer, something like that. It's a great resource. And then UCLA Handshake is another really good one. Um, so in my opinion, it's got the best access for creating appointments with UCLA career counselors, who, by the way, you should reach out to. They don't hear a lot from the students. It's kind of crazy. And they really want to help you. So go reach out to them, okay? Um, you get simple access to quick job applications through there as well. So if you have your resume ready after a night like tonight or you touch it up a bit, you can do these things called quick apply for some jobs where you submit an application within 30 seconds. And who knows what could happen? Um, and you can also message with industry professionals on there too. And then something really cool, I'm not sure how many people know about it, is these services known as VMOC, Parker Dewey, and the General Career Guide. They can all be accessed through Handshake when you go and click on Career Center in the top right and then click Resources. So what VMOC does is it provides immediate artificial intelligence grading and feedback on your professional materials based on criteria submitted to them from hundreds of employers and many UCLA standards that have largely been collected and brought together through reviewing thousands of previous resumes from successful UCLA uh, alumni. Okay, so that's a very good tool. And it literally, it'll grade you out of 100 and tell you where you're at, whether you're below average, average, or above average doing well. Um, so that's definitely something really cool. You know, within instance, I think it's a, a cool thing to check out. Not to brag, but my resume got, I think, a 92% on there. So we'll take it. I bet I bet Nick, Jada, and some of the other people could probably beat me if they run theirs through. So that's definitely worth checking out. Uh, maybe turn it into a game. I know we're all athletes, so we care about the competitiveness and beating each other. Um, so Parker Dewey provides easy access to paid remote micro internships, which is a great way to help beef up your resume if you have some free time. So I know a lot of people are bored right now during COVID. Go check this out, man. Go get some experience, go learn something tangible and make yourself more valuable as a professional. And then also the career guide can show many important things, including resume and cover letters tailored to your specific major or club, sport, or whatever position you're seeking. So I kind of touched upon that earlier in the career center thing, but definitely go check that out. And then next is UCLA One. It's kind of UCLA's own version of LinkedIn, but it's with only UCLA students and alum. So that's definitely a good community for Bruins. Uh, and then to continue on this, LinkedIn, we will have some workshops for these things in the future. So don't stress if you're uh, not like on top of it right now, just because personally, I was not that as a freshman. Um, I'm only a junior now. And so much has happened within the last few years. Uh, but it was thanks to things like this where people were telling me, one, it's a huge tool for networking with anyone from anywhere. And that this really spoke to me. There's really no time like the present to begin creating one. Okay. Having one of these and having a resume, the resume will provide a great foundation for your profile as a professional. And then finally, I don't know how many people know about this, but definitely I got turned on to it recently is Glassdoor. All right. So I think of this as kind of a cheat code for getting jobs, if you ask me. It's essentially the Yelp of a company, but from the worker's perspective. Okay. So it, it literally tells you what these people had to go through uh, when they were getting hired and all that. Uh, so you can also find and apply for jobs through there as well. It's kind of similar to Handshake in that regard. Uh, you can look at a company's, you can look at the overview of a company and the values that it, uh, that it has and like its core missions. So that way you can kind of like Christina touched upon earlier in the cover letter, so you can tailor your language to fit their culture, okay? And your resume, your cover letter and the interviews, all right? And so, yeah, like I said, the people who work there, they share their experiences of what it's like. And a huge thing is that they share that they, they share literally some of the questions uh, that they received during the hiring process. And I literally used this this morning with a company looking at an internship for tech sales, which I did not know much about, but I did a lot of homework for it. And not to sound too confident or arrogant, but I crushed it because I did my homework. 
Okay. So in conclusion, preparation is everything. All right. Do your homework on companies. I, I really can't emphasize that enough. Study them, their people, show attention to detail, and you will knock it out of the ballpark. Okay. You will leave a lasting impression. Many average people overlook these simple things because they require some actual effort, but believe me, it goes a long way. Okay. And also don't be afraid to get started and don't be afraid to fail. Failure truly is the best teacher of all. Okay. Failure is an opportunity to grow. Uh, so one of my favorite examples is Thomas Edison. So when a reporter asked him once, how did it feel to fail 1000 times when trying to create the light bulb? He replied, he didn't fail 1000 times. The light bulb was sim simply an invention with 1000 steps. And that great success is built on failure, frustration, and even catastrophe. So keep that in mind, guys. Fail upwards is a big mantra of mine. That's not to say, go out and purposely fail. Go out and try your hardest, okay? But don't be afraid of failure, all right? It happens to the best of us, all right? This guy left a huge mark on history uh, with something we all use. So you never know what failure can actually lead you to. All right, so now we're gonna go into breakout rooms. I apologize for things going a little longer than expected, uh, but feel free to ask any questions you want to the eboard member in your room. There may be a few. Um, and then also, if you're comfortable, and I would advise this, send them your professional materials and try and set up a time so you can kind of like in office hours, go and break them down together outside of our normal meetings because we want to help you guys, okay?
All righty. So I hope those breakout rooms were pretty productive. Um, do for time real quick. Does anyone have any more like last questions or anything or how do we feel? Feeling pretty good. All right. Sounds good. All right. So one last plug real quick. We do try and search for internship opportunities all the time in the sports industry. Um, we have a few up on our website right now. If you go to uclabisba.com and then click opportunities and then scroll down to Bisba external opportunities. And honestly, while we're at it, there are some internal opportunities to become like a video editor. And I'm blanking a little bit on the other one right now, but there are some internal opportunities. If you want to add some more things, you know, to add to your resume or something, feel free to apply. Okay. We encourage you all to apply as soon as possible because many of these uh, opportunities, the external ones I'm talking about here, they don't have deadlines and they can close at any time. It's kind of a like a rolling admissions process where once they got who they need, they're done. Doors closed for this year. You gotta wait till the next cycle. Okay, so definitely I wouldn't hesitate. I wouldn't wait, okay? If you need any assistance applying or anything or reaching out to people in the company, trying to get your foot in the door, definitely make sure to reach out to us on email or DM, okay? All right, so what are we doing? What's our next play? All right, so next week, there will be no meeting on Thursday because of Thanksgiving. All right, happy Thanksgiving to everybody. As a uh, Patriots fan, I want you all to make sure to cheer on the Patriots, okay? I know that uh, may not be super popular around here, but that's how we're feeling tonight, all right? Now, with regards to two weeks from now, on Thursday, December 3rd, we're going to host my uh, previous boss and one of my dad's good friends, Mike Gottlieb. He's a UCLA alum. He's also the president and co-founder of West Coast Sports Associates, and he's the chairman of Citation Capital Partners, which does commercial real estate investment banking down in Orange County. All right. So Mike and his team are working to make youth sports possible to underprivileged children who would otherwise not have access to sport and the opportunities that sport can present. All right. They're a 25-year-old nonprofit founded in 1995, and they donate over $250,000 per year to directly benefit over 10,000 children across Southern California each year. All right. They've been featured in the LA Times print before, not just online. Um, they've hosted previous Roy Firestone Award winners. So that's their yearly award to honor someone who's done a lot to uh, give back to the community. They've hosted previous people, like shout out to the former legendary Bruin coach, John Wooden, uh, legendary player right here, as you can see in the presentation, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Clayton Kershaw, shout out to the Dodgers, one of the World Series, uh, even though I'm a Red Sox fan. Wayne Gretzky, for all you hockey people. Bob Costas, he's in the photo right there on the right. He's a famous sports commentator. Hank Aaron, baseball, you know, Arnold Palmer, golf, Joe Montana, Steve Young, football. Bill Walton, basketball, Terry Bradshaw, football, Pete Carroll, football. Vin Scully, y'all should know who that is if you're from LA. If you don't, he's the famous uh, Dodgers announcer. And then just a couple weeks ago, we hosted Charles Barkley, among many others. There's been 25, and that's Mike right there in the bottom picture. So we're definitely looking forward to that. And then real quick, just want to give you a reminder of our attendance policy. So we have a point system, which matters a lot for field trips, uh, prizes, giveaways, et cetera. Okay, and just general standing. So attendance is worth two points. Uh, we obviously, we want you all to be here each week. Uh, we think we bring a lot of value to the table and you bring value to us too. It's what helps build uh, the network for all of us. Uh, so reposts, those are worth a point. Uh, make sure to tag at UCLA Bisba on any platform, we're on all of them. Uh, you're also welcome to reach out to a board member and meet with them, that's worth two points. Make sure to let us know. Uh, and then also if you're able to help bring in a connection, all right, so whether it's outreach or something to bring in a brand new speaker, um, that's worth 10 points, that's worth a lot, all right? So we wanna thank you all once again for attending. Make sure to follow all our socials and stay up to date for future events. And uh, you know, really appreciate you being here and listening to that. And I hope we were able to give you some good takeaways for tonight. All right. So good night, everybody.